Welcome back everyone. Right now we're going to go over the muscular system. Now remember that the body uses three systems together in order to produce movement. It has the central nervous system, the skeletal system, and then the muscular system. Okay, so the muscular system. The nervous system is the control center for movement production, and the skeletal system provides the structural framework for our bodies. However, to complete the cycle of movement production, the body must have a device that the nervous system can command to move the skeletal system. This is the muscular system. Muscles generate internal tension that, under the control of the nervous system, manipulates the bones of our bodies to produce movement. Muscles are the movers and stabilizers of our bodies. The structure of the skeletal muscle. Now, we have three different types of muscles in our bodies. We have the skeletal muscle, smooth muscles, and cardiac muscles. The skeletal muscles are the ones that are responsible for voluntary movement. When you decide to move your phalanges, let's say for example, your brain sends electrical signals all the way down your spinal cord, through, through the spinal cord all the way down to your fingers. And what you have in your skeletal muscles, you have these things called motor neurons. Now, these are when the, your nervous system sends the electricity through these motor neurons, the motor neurons then shock the muscle, and that's what causes the muscle to contract, and that in turn pulls your finger forward. Okay? So the structure of the skeletal muscle. Skeletal muscle is one of three major muscle types in the body. The others are cardiac and smooth muscles, like we just said. Skeletal muscle is made up of individual muscle fibers, and the term muscle literally refers to multiple bundles of muscle fibers held together by connective tissue. Now, you have billions, millions, tons, you have tons of muscle fibers, you know, these cells. These cells, in turn, come together, and they work together to produce the muscular system. And the muscles are made of primarily protein, which are the building blocks of your your uh, foundation. Okay, so bundles of muscle fibers can be further broken down into layers from the outer surface to the innermost layer. The first bundle is called the actual muscle itself, wrapped by an outer layer of the connective tissue called fascia, and an in inner layer immediately surrounding the muscle called the epimysium. So, your muscle is made up of millions of individual muscle fibers. Okay, when they're connected together, they produce the muscle as a whole. Now the muscle is wrapped by epimysium, which is known as fascia. And here's an illustration. I don't know if you can really see it. But here's a picture of the muscle. Now tendons are what connect your muscle to the bone. Okay, so you have the epimysium, which is known as the deep fascia, and that's what surrounds the all the muscle fibers that together create the entire muscle. So you can kind of think of it as like a cord. You know, you you have an extension cord and you cut it open, and then you see look inside the extension cord, then you have other cords again wrapped by another layer of rubber, you know, whatever the extension cord is wrapped out of. That is essentially how your muscles are when it comes to the function and the structure, I should say. Okay? So the first is that the first bundle is the actual muscle itself, wrapped by an outer layer of connective tissue called fascia, and an inner layer immediately surrounding the muscle called the epimysium. The fascia and epimysium are also connected to bone to help to form the muscle's tendon. The next bundle of muscle called fiber is called the fascicle. So the fascicles are the these individual muscle fibers, which in turn are made up of more individual muscle fibers. Okay? And each fascicle is wrapped by a connective tissue called the paramysium, kind of like the extension cord we were talking about. Each fascicle is in turn made up of many individual muscle fibers that are wrapped by connective tissue called endomysium. So as you can see, it gets further broken down. 
you have the epimesium, which makes the muscle as a whole. And then within the epimesium are many other fibers that are connected together called the endomesium. And then that in turn is made up of many more individual muscle fibers, which is the oh, what is it? endomesium. Okay, the fasciculus. Fasciculus is essentially each of these little muscle fibers connect together. Okay, and then the fasciculus is then wrapped by tons of smaller muscle fibers, which in turn is basically the the smallest layer of that individual muscle fiber. Okay. Now, connective tissues within the muscles play a vital role in movement. They allow the forces to generate excuse me, sorry. They allow the forces to generate by the muscle to be transmitted from the contractile components of the muscle discussed next to the bones creating motion. Each layer of connective tissue extends the length of the muscle helping to form a tendon. Okay, so they allow the forces generated by the muscle to be transmitted from the contractile components of the muscles. Okay, that's essentially the the motor neurons or the motor units that I was talking about that allows the central nervous system to shock the muscle into contracting. Okay? And then tendons. Tendons, remember how I was saying are what connect bone to muscle? Tendons are the structures that attach muscles to bone and provide the anchor from which the muscle can exert force and control the bone and joint. They are very similar to ligaments in that they have poor vascularity blood supply, which leaves them susceptible to slower repair and adaptation. So, when you're exercising, you want to be very careful when it comes to your tendons and your ligaments. Remember, these two have low blood supply. So, if they get injured, or if, yeah, if anything happens to them, it could take a very long time for it to actually heal. And, you know... Be, be be able to work again. <laughs> and that's essentially, that's exactly what you don't want. Okay. So, I'll read this memory jogger to you. It's basically going to go over everything I had just said. As with ligaments, the tendons poor vascularity will be important to remember when considering the numbers of days rest taken and the structure of your daily exercise programming plan. When performing high intensity exercise to ensure you do not develop overuse injuries. So if you have any susceptible injuries or anything like pain coming onto you like that, you want to take a rest, especially when it comes to your tendons and ligaments. Okay, so next we're gonna go over muscle fibers and their contractile elements. Now, like the neurons are for the central nervous system, the neuron is the basic unit for function for the central nervous system. Now with muscles we have this thing called a sarcomere. And sarcomeres are the functioning units of the muscles like the neurons is for the nervous system. Okay? So muscle fibers and their contractile elements. Muscle fibers are encased by a plasma membrane known as the sarcolemma and contains cell components such as cellular plasma called sarcoplasm which contains glycogen, fats, minerals, and oxygen binding myoglobin, nuclei, and mitochondria which transform energy from food into energy for the cell. Okay, so glycogen, fats, and minerals, and oxygen binding myoglobin are what's essential for keeping all the cells in your body healthy and working and alive. They consist of a nuclei and mitochondria, which transform energy from food into energy for the cell. So it is in this sarcoplasm that is within the deepest layer of muscle uh, tissue that allows the muscle to obtain all that it needs for proper growth and function. 
Okay, unlike, it, unlike other cells, they also have structures called myofibrils. Myofibrils contain myelofilaments that are the actual contractile components of the muscle tissue. These myofilaments are known as actin, which are thin string-like filaments, and myosin, which are the thick filaments. Okay, so here's an illustration for the muscle. Now, the sarcomere. This, remember how I was saying the sarcomere is the functioning unit of the muscle? So, these actin and my, myosin filaments, what these, I don't know if you could really see it, but these really thin ones right here, those are the actin, okay? And these thick ones right here are the myosin. And what happens is, is when your muscle contracts, the myosin grabs on to the actin, and it pulls, it pulls it together. And that is how your muscle contracts. And then when you're, when you're not contracting, is this still recording? Okay, I'm sorry, I just seen the light flash, so it made a, I thought it might have, anyway. So when your muscle extends, your myosin lets go of the actin, and then it allows it to stretch, okay? So, the actin, which is the thin, and myosin, the thick filaments, form a number of repeating sections within a myofibril. Each one of these particular sections is known as a sarcomere. Now remember how I was saying the sarcomere is the functioning unit of the muscles. Kind of like how the neurons is the functional unit of the nervous system. A sarcomere is the functional unit of the muscle, much like a neuron is for the nervous system. There we go. It lies in the space between two Z-lines. Each Z-line denotes another sarcomere along the myofibril. So these Z-lines, your whole, your muscles have a lot of Z-lines, which are basically the, the separating sites between each uh, actin, and myo, uh, actin and myosin contracting sheath, okay? Or filaments, I should say. Okay. Two protein structures that are also used to muscle contraction are tropomyosin and troponin. Tropomyosin is located on the actin filament and blocks myosin binding sites located in the actin filament, keeping myosin from attaching to actin when the muscle is in a relaxed state. So when your muscle is relaxed, you're, you have uh, tropomyosin. Um, uh, what, is, what is this word I'm looking for? You have tropomyosin ah, present, I should say. You have tropomyosin present within the muscle when your muscle is relaxed, which in turn keeps the myosin from grabbing onto the actin filaments and causing it to pull, okay? So, troponin, also located on the actin filament, plays a role in muscle contraction by providing binding sites for both calcium and tropomyosin when the muscle needs to contract. So when you need to contract your muscle, troponin, which is also located on the active filament, is in the role of the muscle providing binding sites for both calcium and tropomyosin when the muscle needs to contract. So troponin is basically what allows the myosin to grab onto the actin when it is in a state that needs to be contracted. Okay? Now, I'm going to go ahead and end it with that part on this video. Next, we have the neural activation, the sliding uh, filament theory, and the excitation contracting coupling, and also the motor units with the all or nothing law. Okay, so. Thank you for watching this video, and um, I'll see you on the other video. <laughs> Take care.